Hi guys, let's look at checkmate pattern called Greco's Mate today. Greco's Mate is named after Giuachino Greco. I'm pretty sure most of you would have seen his game at one point. His games are one of the earliest recorded games in any chess database. Usually it says Greco versus NN, no name. And it usually involves a brutal attacking sequence by Greco ending in his opponent's checkmate. So what do we need for Greco's Mate? First, we need a bishop that controls a diagonal where the king is positioned originally after castling kingside. Here it is the a2, g8 diagonal. We also need a knight that is sort of nearby to the opponent's king that can be used to attack the king. The position of the knight itself can be quite flexible, but most of the times we are going to sacrifice this knight to open the h file. And then lastly, we need a piece usually a queen, but can be a rook as well in some uh, situation, to checkmate the black king on the h-file. In this first example, we go knight g6. Now, there is only one legal move for black here, which is uh, h takes g6, and now there is a mate, queen h2, checkmate. Let's look at another position where a different type of Greco's mate happen. The underlying logic is still the same. We have a bishop, we have a knight that we're gonna use, that we're gonna sacrifice to open the h-file, and then we have a queen to checkmate the black king on the h-file. But because the position of the knight is slightly different than before, then the actual execution of the Greco's mate will be slightly different. First, we start by going bishop c4 check. Now, obviously, black can just take the bishop, but then rook takes. There will be no Greco's mate, but then white will be winning easily. So we won't analyze that line. Instead here, blacking goes king g8, king h8, I should say. And now we go knight g5. We threatening mate in one. Most natural defense by black here would be h6. And now we go queen g6. Again, we are threatening mate in one. Of course, black can take our knight. h takes g6, but that's exactly what we want. We sacrifice the knight to open the h file. And now we switch back to the earlier position, queen h5, and it's a checkmate. Another variation of Greco's mate, this one is actually from Greco's game himself. Greco versus no name, played in 1620. Why to play and win? We already have our bishop on the diagonal. We already have our knight ready to attack. Now we use our queen to come closer to the opponent's king, queen h5. The threat here is obvious, again, threatening mate in one. And as we've seen in the previous position, usually in this kind of position, uh, black's only defense is to go h6. Now, unlike the previous position, we cannot go queen g6 because then black would just take and then there is no checkmate because this uh, f7 pawn is not open. So at the previous position, here we first take the f7 pawn opening the line for the bishop. Now it's very dangerous for black already. Greco's opponent, Mr. No Name, here actually play queen f6. And now there's already a force made. First go knight takes h6, check. Black is in double check. When you're in double check, the king has to move. There's no other way. King h8. Now we have yet another double check. Knight f7 check. Again, king has to move. King g8 and then queen h8, checkmate. I think it's worth noting also that in the previous position, which is um, here, the best move by black here is actually to just take the, the knight. There is no checkmate yet, but white is winning uh, pretty uh, pretty big. 8.7 uh, 8 advantage according to Stockfish. Just to show you one of the continuation, if king h8 here, for example, then we just sacrifice the bishop and open up the whole position. This is already a checkmate as well. Okay, guys, let's practice now black to move and win with Greco's checkmate pattern. Feel free to pause the video and analyze the position, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, here as black, we already have all the ingredients for Greco's mate. We already have a knight. We already have a bishop that control the diagonal. And when the knight moves, we actually will get a discover check. And then we already have a queen that can checkmate the white king. 
the thing we need to calculate is where to move our knight to, right? And we need to make all the moves are for as forcing as possible. The best move is knight e4 here, check. Now, I mean, queen can go to f2, but that's silly, so we won't uh, analyze it, because uh, we will just take. So king h1, and now there is a force made in 2 already. Knight g3, check. H takes g3, the only move for white, really. And then queen h6, checkmate. Last position to practice. White to move and win using Greco's mate checkmate pattern. As usual, please feel free to pause the video and figure things out on your own first, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, here the most important thing is not to take the knight first. If we take the knight first, then actually the position is even according to the computer analysis. Instead, white should start with knight e7 check. This is a double check. So basically black king is forced to move, king h8. And now as usual with Greco's mate, we always use the knight and sacrifice the knight to open the h file. So here knight g6 check. Black has only one legal move here, which is h takes g6. And only then we take the knight and open the h file. It's not yet a checkmate because the queen can go to h4. But yeah, of course it's silly. We just take and then it's a checkmate. Okay guys, that's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe and please check out my checkmate pattern playlist to study other checkmate patterns. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.